noise and it just made Got me it. trim. Awesome. All right, all done. Okay, I'm glad you all have chose to join me tonight for this four week journey that we are about to embark upon. And as you can see there on the screen, the title of this four week uh, webinar is Comedic Genesis of Christianity. Okay, so I wanna just kind of break that down for you. Comedic being the uh, representing the spiritual si um, system that represents not just Egypt or, um, or any of the, the well-known areas of Northeast Africa. But when I say comedic, I'm talking about the entire Nile Valley influence. I still getting some background noise um, V from somewhere. Uh, I don't know who who's. Let me um, figure might, out. One second. Or you might want to mute yours. It, it just might be picking you up. So, um, so when we talk about the comedic genesis of Christianity, comedic alludes to the um, entire continent of Africa, but particularly along what is known as the now in the Nile Valley civilization. For it is believed that at the um, north end of the Nile, which is, or this, what we call south, would be north. Africa is truly oriented upside down currently. And so when you look back south, you will be looking up the Nile. And if you look to the beginning of the Nile, that's where it is believed that all civilization started. And so I wanted to embark upon this journey for the next four weeks in the month of February, the month that we have designated as Black History Month. But the challenge that I see is that we continue to repeat the same old stories and messages. It's as if, here's some moving around. Um, it is as if we have um, a history that only starts with the enslavement period. Yeah, I think we got uh, open mic there. Um, I'm hearing some moving around. I don't know where that's coming from. Oh, okay. Okay, yeah, that's Marcella. <laughs> See, make sure Marcella's mic is muted. <laughs> Good. Uh, no, it's still it's still live. Okay, Marcella, can you mute it on your end? I did mute my. Okay, it's muted. Nope, oh, I can still hear the moving around. Okay, that's the, wait. Nope. Everyone's muted on my end. Okay, let's, I'm hearing, so someone's moving, I can hear it right now. I don't know where that's coming from. Okay, um, but we should be have, able to have all, all, everyone muted out. I think we're okay. okay. I'm muted, up. everyone's that's, muted on my end. Awesome, so I don't know where it's coming from. Well, um, back to what I was saying. So when we talk about Black History Month, traditionally, uh, we focus on our history as it pertains to the enslavement or what is known as the Ma'afa, that is where those Africans who were caught in the, um, the, the, the slave, um, it wasn't a slave trade, but there was nothing of value on trade at all. I don't know why we're having a lot of feedback um, with somebody's mic. So are you muted out? I am muted out. I'm looking for who that is. You look down through there and see if there's open mic. I'm getting feedback from no mics. I'm well, showing I'm muted on my mic. end. Can everyone make sure they're muted on their end in case I'm missing someone? 10 attendees, and I'm looking at all red mics. Kenneth, mute it. Okay, and great. And so, and so if there they were coming are. in, phone, we may have picked that up too. Good, so thank you. So we're working our way through technology. Technology is our friend. And so I didn't want to have that same age old conversation during Black History Month. But because I lead a spiritual conversation, I thought this was the most appropriate time to address the African um, um, influence on the five major religions, but really focusing on Christianity. And so it says, Genesis, which represents the beginning. So the comedic genesis of Christianity, basically what I'm saying, the influence that comedic science, because they didn't have religion, religion, spirituality was the science. It was the practice principles. And so when we say comedic science, 
we are talking about a lived out spiritual system that includes um, universal principles and practices. It includes a, a, a system that was played out in the lives of those who lived it that wasn't geared towards death, even though um, those who were, has been called um, Egyptologists, the early Egyptologists who were Europeans, didn't fully understand the culture, didn't understand the symbolisms, and therefore they, um, in some cases, I'll give them the benefit of the doubt, that they were attempting to interpret the what they were experiencing, but because of the limitations of their worldview, they misinterpreted. But then in some cases, there was just gross adultery of the word that they were receiving. And so we want to explore that. So here we are. We are here in Black History Month 2021. Many of you may have seen this picture um, here. This picture that you see here on the your screen um, is beyond the quest for a Black Jesus. The reason why I put that there is because many times when we have this conversation of the African influence on the scriptures or Christianity in particular, everyone wants to focus on the character or the historical personage of Jesus. And then they focus in on, well, there is scripture that says he had hair of wool, his skin was as, was as black, um, I mean, his feet was as varnished um, uh, brass. And they use those things to say that he was black. All of those are really metaphors. And so my next question is, what difference does it make if Jesus is black? So we have a lot of Christians or pastors who will change the very image of Jesus, the historical Jesus, to white, I mean, from white to black. And then they continue to teach the same thing. So you really are missing the essence of a picture is worth a thousand words. So it does you no good to change the picture but you don't correct all the words that have been engrafted into the, the minds of the men and women who have um, uh, been part of Christianity. Now, I wanna premise this by saying that I am a Christian and I am not here tonight to influence any of you to change what you currently believe. Take this on as a course that you are getting additional information and then be, um, be subject to what the spirit says to you. So welcome to the 2021 Black History webinar series, the mornings. There's a couple of things I wanted to put right out here, a disclaimer. Um, the, um, we won't allow anybody to be bashed. Um, so you can't bash any participants. Uh, no attacking will be allowed. Uh, others to, uh, or we won't allow anyone to attack or or let anyone attack you. So if you have a view, when we go to the open mic, to the back room, we start conversations, um, whatever your position is, it's your position. We wanna hear you out. Um, I want to warn you that there's a thing called cognitive dissonance. Um, and that is when you get some new information that bumps up against what you have been taught to believe and it causes you to toss and turn. It causes you to um, really, really ponder. So this course will cause cognitive dissonance. Anyone that has approached a topic or began to look at their belief systems as it relates to the African influence of Christianity have experienced some level of cognitive dissonance. Many of my peers who have experienced it have chose to either just totally forget or attempt to forget what they've learned or they have chosen to um, just let it all go uh, because it's too much information. Um, and there are so many lies that have been told and people say, well, I don't wanna have anything to do with that. Well, I wanna caution you. I wanna say to you, don't throw the baby out with the bath water. Before this four weeks is over, I'm, I guarantee you there'll be something presented to you that will cause you to question if you should even be inside of this series. Now, here's also what I think you should know. Because you registered for this series, you right, you are right where you're supposed to be. You've heard it said, when the student is ready, the teacher will, will appear. But I also believe when the teacher is ready, the students will appear. 
So last thing, I wanna warn you that you will be exposed to comedic spirituality that will bump up against and be abrasive to what you may already know as Christianity. Um, by the end of this course, you will have a better understanding of what it means to say um, that you are a Christian. You will also be able to contend the faith, particularly if you're on the call and you are an African-American or of African descent and you have are inside of the African-American community, you will find yourself bumping up against traditional Christians who will uh, begin to question what you believe. I want to warn you, don't get into useless arguments. A good way to always start the conversation if someone asks you a question regarding your beliefs that are different from theirs is to ask them, what difference will it make? If I share with you, gave you the answer that, you, that may be different than you're looking for, what difference will it make in your life? And if it's not gonna make a difference, then why even share it with them? So I'm really hesitant to share with individuals information that I have, unless I understand that they are ready for it. For the scripture tells us that we are to be careful um, that we not cast out pearls before swine. Basically what that metaphor is saying to you that a, a pig gets no nutrient out of a pearl. It'll eat it, but it'll get nothing out of it. So why give anything to someone that they're not going to get something from. If there's resistance, then they won't get anything out of it. If anything, it's going to cause you to be frustrated. So I want you to be aware of that. Um, I want you to know that the journey that you're embarking upon, it takes a lot of courage to question your belief system. So let's look at some of what we will cover over the next four weeks. Now, what you see here on the screen is just a snippet of what we will cover. We're gonna cover much more than that. And this course will not only be on, on Tuesday nights, but you'll get assignments, you'll get extra information. Now, some of the things that I send you, you may not get to, but I do encourage you to get a folder or to have a um, on your computer, because most of the stuff that I send you will be electronic. I will have a file there and I will put in that file comedic Christianity and then that way everything that I send you you could drop it in there because some of the stuff that I give you you're going to grab hold of some of it's going to go over your head some of it's going to go over in one ear and out the other but that's to be expected I've been in this conversation for over 25 years and I'm still I'm dizzy with some of the information that I get. So what are we gonna cover over the next four weeks? We're gonna talk about um, the comedic cosmology of Genesis or the comedic Genesis story, the, the comedic influence on the book, the book called Genesis. Now I'm going to, all this week, you'll get so additional information sent to you, some of which you can read, some of which will be um, individuals who are subject matter experts that I have come across because I don't attest to knowing everything. I don't have to know everything. I just have to know how to get access to it. And so through this course, you also learn how to study yourself, how to identify what is credible sources and what are not credible sources because there's a lot of information out on the um, YouTube, um, the, the electronic library, and you have to be able to discern what is a good source document. Just as well as early on when the um, Europeans um, invaded Egypt, Kemet, and they took the information and took it back. Uh, before that, it was the Greeks. The Greeks took it back and they began to teach it uh, without footnoting some of the stuff was just taught incorrectly. The same thing is happening with some Africans, African-Americans who have um, taken on this topic. Some people are doing it out of anger. Um, that is, they, are, they want to be, just get the information so they can refute or so they can argue other people and put other people down. No, let people be where they are. 
and know this, where you are today, there is somebody who's coming along that will be right where you are. And so even as you move down this continuum of um, not only gaining the information, but mastery of the information, always remember when you're talking to someone that you're challenging their beliefs. N not, not overtly, but covertly. When you bump up against what they think they know with something that causes them to expand, you are actually challenging them. So be ready for, for how people will respond to that. We're gonna talk about the, so inside of that week, this um, that conversation, we're gonna look at the two comedic Genesis stories that are the template for our Genesis. When you look in Genesis chapter one, chapter one all the way from Genesis chapter one and one, all the way to Genesis chapter two, verse three, that's one Genesis story. Then that same story is told over, it's the second Genesis story. Two stories that are similar, but teaching on two different levels. That's why it's really important that you learn how to read the scripture and to interpret them with not only from an exoteric, um, that which you can see that which is so familiar to you, but an esoteric or the metaphysical, the deeper level. So we're going to learn in the next four weeks how to decode the mythical story and tap into the intended wisdom when we look at the story of um, Genesis, um, the creation of man, um, in one story where he creates man as a spirit and creates a male and female, that is, you have the man as a spirit or the individual is created as a spirit. And then it is um, also, um, it shares with us that it has a divine feminine aspect to it and a divine masculine aspect to it. Then in Genesis chapter two, we see the same story. And now we see the story from the physical sense of God actually forming man from the, the clay. Now that story is a comedic story that can be found in some of the ancient writings of the Medun Neter, though there's the, the um, writings of the um, Madura is like the holy writings of Medinetar and Netter um, means the word Netter, N-T-R, or you can see it spelled N-E-T-C-H-E-R or C-H-R, Netter. Um, Netter is a principle, it is not a God. Um, when more than one principle is alluded to, it's called a Netteru. So when you see it with an N-T-R-U, it's representing more than one principle. When you see it just as N-T-R, it's representing one. So as we go through this teaching, these teachings, I'm going to drop some things on you. So you don't have to try to grab all of it because it's being recorded. Um, so in the second week, or because um, some of the things I cover, I will overlap them. We're going to deal with the name game. We're going to, we're going to deal with, um, um, you're going to be introduced to um, some the names that you are familiar with and their counterparts, which are actually comedic names. We're going to look at key biblical um, um, personalities, uh, such as Adam and Eve, and we'll come to see um, what their names, their comedic names would be, or the, the, the Netaru, uh, the principle. So the Adam and Eve that we look at as an actual physical person is, has, this, has a counterpart in the comedic cosmology, but is not looked at as a physical person. See, what has happened is, what has happened is we have been taught to literalize the, the Bible. Um, and the Bible has not always been in existence. Before the Bible ever came into existence, the, the comedic um, teachings were engraved on the, um, the walls inside of the temples. And fortunately enough, it was engraved because if it wasn't engraved, we would be a people most miserable because we would be subject to what we've been subject to since the, um, the, the printing, the Gutenberg printing press. Ever since the 1400s, when the Gutenberg printing press came out, the very first document that they 
created was the Bible. Why would they make that the first mass produced written document? Even though it was a mass produced written document, you know this, that most people, most of the Europeans were illiterate and couldn't even read it. And so what we have to understand, what we say is the word of God needs to be questioned. Why would God, why would source, why would the creator who was in the beginning with all mankind wait until 300 BC, 300, like 300 BC to begin to have written documents that lead up to what we call the Holy Bible. See, some of the things we have to, one of the things we have to learn to do is not hang our heads at the door. When you go into the church, usually you don't go in the church to think, you go in the, you go in the door to be poured into. And we've been so wonderfully programmed that we don't question what is being taught to us. However, if you're sitting in a college level class and the professor says something that is a truism and you don't jive with it, you have the opportunity to ask the professor. That what makes the professor the professor. He or she is, is um, well versed in the topic and can help you understand why they are teaching that truth. And they don't see you as contending against them. Whereas if in any, I don't know about you, but I've been in a situation where I've been in a Bible study and it's been encouraged to ask questions, but the moment you ask the question that goes against the script, then you were looked at that side eye. Um, so I don't want that to happen here. What is gonna happen here, and we're gonna talk about that, um, what I would expect from you as it pertains to this course as we move forward. Um, so we're gonna look at um, divine femininity, divine masculinity, um, when we talk about the name game, uh, we're, we're gonna come away with understanding this. I'll tell you right now, for every ma masculine principle or netter, netter, which represents what? A, a, a de, not a deity, but a, a divine principle played out in the livelihood of a person so you can understand the essence of it. There's always a divine masculine. And for many of us, we don't know, um, just like Amen is a divine netter um, that has a, a matching feminine aspect. I'm a net, just like the principle many of you are aware of, ma'at, okay? There is a male aspect of ma'at, it's ma'a. And so we have, over the course of time, come to realize that for, even for those um, comedic, um, for, for comedic teachers, uh, like your Dr. Ben Yakiman, um, like your um, um, Van Sertema, who really introduced us to this at a scholarly level, they uncover some things, but there are some things that have evolved since then. So I'm gonna to introduce to you some of the latest um, research finding that wasn't uh, around 30 years ago. Um, and so if you're reading a 30 year old book, you need to be able to um, add that information to that conversation. So we, we're gonna look in week three, we're gonna talk about astrotheology. Astrotheology, you may say, well, why are we bringing astrotheology uh, or the astrology into this conversation? First of all, because when we talk about astrology, which all of us are familiar with at some level, if I stop this uh, recording right now and ask you all what's your sign, all of you will tell me what's your sign. Unless you're steeped in that religious conversation, you will say it's a stop sign. Don't ask me no more questions about what sign I am because my sign is the cross. You know, I've been down that road um, when I was really proselytized uh, out there, um, putting the word out um, early in my career. But I'm glad that I had that experience so I can um, have a level of empathy for someone who is still doing that which I no longer do. So we're going to um, look at um, the inside of astro theology. We're going to look at time, um, creation, when it says in the beginning. Um, and when you look at in the beginning and you take that from the perspective of the, the Christian Bible, it, it used to be believed, it used to be written in the, in the Bible, in the help section of the Bible, 
beginning was 6,000 years ago, or it was 8,000 years ago. Now, there was a, some truth to that. The beginning was when the stories that they are, were telling were considered the beginning and the time they were being told. Example, when we go back and look into the time cycles, and I'm going to go into this on a deeper level, it's not um, strange to me since I know the time cycles, uh, age lasts about 2,160 years. And if I bag back 2,160, if I reverse 2,160 years and then pay attention to where I'm at, astrologically, the sign type that is in the sky will match what is being talked about biblically. So if I go all the way back to Genesis, it takes me back to um, the time of Gemini. And so inside of Gemini, you see the, the creation of things with duality. You have Adam and Eve. Okay. And when you look at the comedic creation, it uses, so creation probably started in the, when, the, when things were set, the creation starts, you got to have the male and the female to reproduce. So that's why you, the genesis for things to begin, you have to have those two energies. And so we're going to look at the names. We're going to have a, uh, a better understanding of the names inside of the astro theology. You're going to be able to define an age. You're going to be able to determine the processional of the age, particularly for those of you who are um, inside of this conversation of the age of Aquarius. Um, we're not in age. We're not all the way in, but we're currently under the influence of two ages. We're under the influence of the age of Aquarius, which is coming in. We're under the influence of the age of Pisces, the church age, which is going out. And so there's a struggle. Uh, one of the struggles that I, I, I see often when I turn on YouTube, I see um, Christians, black pastors um, contending that this whole comedic thing need to be left alone because it has no proof. They say there's no source documents. Well, hell, you tell me what source documents that Christianity, Christianity has. The only source, true source document that Christianity has is those documents that they have stolen from out of Egypt. And when we look at our Bible, you can't use that as an authentic source document because the Bible most of us read says the King James Version. So some of the things that we will take as arguments that appear to be sound, when you step away and look at it, you say, that's really not sound thinking. So you have to be careful when those who don't know try to tell you why you shouldn't know. If you're on this path right now, you're on it because the spirit has led you here. If it was not for you to know this information, the spirit would not have allowed it to be presented to you. So we're going to understand astral theology in order to know what time it is, to understand the Bible, and we're going to also help, it was always going to help us understand astrology as it relates to us as individuals. And then the, the final week, we're going to look at uh, the comedic tree of life. Now, we know the tree of life that is found in the book of Genesis, but there is a comedic tree of life also. And we have to also understand that the tree of life is a, numer is a numerical tree that talks about the stages of transformation. If you are familiar with the Jewish Kabbalah, which is the mystical side, just like Christianity has a mystical side, which is comedic science, the Jewish scriptures have a, um, a uh, mystic side, which is the Kabbalah. Now, the only thing that you have to be conscious of when you talk about uh, Catholicism, not, I mean, not Catholicism, when you talk about Judaism, we must attach Judaism to comedic thought. Because if you spend, imagine, we've, spend, we've been here for a little under 300 years. And those of us who are Africans in America, we have been acculturated. We have taken on the King James um, version of the Bible, the Christianity, Westernized Christianity, as our practice. And where did we get it from? 
We got it because we were inside of this culture and it was imposed on us. Likewise, if this, this group of people that are known as the, the, the Jews, the Hebrews, were in Egypt for 400 years. Now, mind you, there's only 70 went in and a mixed multitude come out. So if they were there for 40, 400 years, then that 70, those 70 people lost everything that they had, meaning they, they began to um, adjust their names, they began, their culture became the same as the comedic culture. And you know why it would come, become the same? Because most people came to Egypt because Egypt was the place of safety or commit or commit thought, and they took took it on. Unlike the um, chattel slavery, where we were, um, our names were taken from us, our culture was taken from us, um, our families were taken from us. Anything that represented greatness, represented who we were as a people, was taken from us. And so the point I'm making here is that. When we look at the comedic tree of life, including the Kabbalah, I may talk a little bit about the Kabbalah, but I'm going to talk about numbers also. Um, I'm going to talk about zero to nine, because it's important that you understand the numerical values of things. Words have numerical values. Um, frequencies are tied to numbers. The universe works on numbers. And you know what the most powerful number is in the universe? One. Even though there's myriad or many manifestations, it still represents the oneness of God. That's where the, um, the Egyptologists got it wrong. When they saw the, um, Im the images on the pyramids or on the um, temples, they mistakenly believed that the Egyptians, one, they called them the wrong thing, the Kematau, Kematu, Kematau, the Kimites, that they um, worship these things. No, they understand, understood the individuality, but the oneness of them. We have the same thing. We understand in the traditional Christian sense, we understand that the, theirs is the Father, there is the Son, and there's the Holy Spirit. But it goes on to say, these three are one. And the scripture tells us, the Lord thy God is the one. So we're going to understand numerology, um, the oneness of everything. So inside of these next four weeks, you're going to get a lot. Even though I have kind of laid out some things that I want to cover, I'm also going to make room for those burning questions that you have. So let's look at what the logistics are for the next three to four weeks. Every Tuesday night, you'll get a presentation. Um, as we move forward, um, the presentations will, reason why I'm going to use the, um, the, the, the um, keynote format so you can see visuals because I'm going to, I'm going to put pictures up. So you, when you see images, you'll know what Amen looked like. You'll know what Asar looked like, what, what Aset looked like. You will know what Huru looked like. You, you will know um, all of these, um, what we would call netters, netters or Neteru look like. So when you see an image, you will know what that image is saying, and you won't get stuck on the personality, but you will understand when you see our SAR, you're seeing the image that talks about transformation. That is, I am our SAR. Each one of us, we are our SAR. We are the elevated individual that is really living out as a spirit being. I am our SAR. Um, so I want you to know that. So every Tuesday, you're going to get a teaching. Um, then you'll get supplemental reference and teaching materials sent to you. That's why it's important that you register. Um, by registering, I have your email and I can send these things to you. Now, I wanna say something about that. I had everyone register and I also put a price point on it. Did I put the price point on it because I needed $49.99? No, I put the price point on it because for some who have just itchy ears, or some who want to get involved in this conversation just to argue, they may say, uh, I'm not going to waste $49 to try to argue or refute with those individuals. So it kind of weeded out a lot of individuals. So there are some of you who uh, uh, I made a way for you to get into this the webinar without costing it out. Again, I'm not doing this for 
for the, um, the financial reward of doing it, but I do want to always make space. If what I'm giving is a blessing to you, then there's always a way that you can sow a seed into the ministry. Monday night discussions, okay? So you say Monday night discussions, if you, so whatever I go over on Tuesday and whatever I send you through the week, then on Monday nights is not a mandatory, but it will be a open mic session. So on Monday nights, it's going to, you're gonna get a link that allow you to come in um, through the Zoom um, individuals uh, meeting, okay? So you're in Zoom webinar now, but you're gonna come into Zoom meetings. And when you come into Zoom meetings, it allows you to be able to engage me in a more real time without having a, a have to have a proctor or a facilitator. So it's gonna be lively discussions around what we've talked about the week before, what you've experienced since then. So that way you're not just getting information, but you're also getting uh, the opportunity to, um, to engage that information, to talk about it. Now, am I saying I have all the answers? No, but I do know how, what, a point, what direction to point you in or to go alongside of you to the answer. Lastly, I want you to know this is a learning environment. And what I mean by it's a learning environment is safe for you to ask questions. It's safe for you to make comments. It's safe for you to, to uh, present something. And if it's not consistent with what I have found to be the truth, um, sometimes I will come alongside and adjust it. If it's something that's significant, if it's something that is not significant, I may just let it hang out there because I know when you study the next session, the next section, you're going to encounter and see if you adjust what you believe. So here's what I want to do right now. I want to ask this question. Why are you here? What drew you here? So I want to give you um, a couple minutes, a couple seconds to think about that. Why did you register for the course? Or what was it about this course that got your attention? And because this is a webinar and this is a learning environment, I am going to ask that my um, show director uh, go through everyone who's on the call today. And I want two things to happen. I want you to say, hello. I want you to say your name. And I want you to share with us what city you're in, your name and what city you're in. And then I would like you to share um, what got you here now. You could be what you got a burning question and you can ask that burning question. I, I won't answer it tonight, but at least we want to capture the questions. I put out there in the email, a question box. Every email that I send you with assignments or with um, resources, the question box will be there. Why do I have it there? Because when you ask that question, I'm going to answer it back to you but I'm also gonna keep your question and the answers in a frequently asked question file. And at some point I'll make that available to you all as a resource, because I don't want you to have to go through what I've gone through. And when I tell my story, you will understand. All right, V, I would like you to uh, facilitate that now. Um, Absolutely. Each call. Awesome. All right, we got Mama B up first. That is the first one there on my screen on my list to the right. So I can unmute her. Yep. Just ask her to unmute. Good afternoon. Can you hear me? We yes. can. Thank you. Good afternoon. I want to know why you always choose me first. <laughs> I'm not picking on you, Mama B. Just happens okay. to be in alphabetical order here on my screen. Okay, I enjoyed it, but some of the uh, information that he's given, I do have it in a steel old fashioned trunk in my closet. When he come home, whenever he can get up in here, he can take it or he can open it up. 
mostly everything Greg has did, I had IBM. I didn't have a computer. I would take a recording to the meeting, come back home, type it up, and put it in a folder. And he know it. But some of this is bringing, coming back to my remembrance because when he said he was going to have this, I said, oh, my. When he said commit it, I said, well, then he's not going to talk about who died yesterday and who did this and who did that. So I'm enjoying it, although I have been awake since 2 o'clock this morning, and my eyes are very heavy, but I'm paying attention, and I thank you. We appreciate your comment. Next up, I have Dorothy. Dorothy, I'm asking you to unmute right now so that you are allowed to go ahead and talk to the guest here. Sometimes Dorothy is listening from her desk at okay. work. So Hello? Okay. Oh, yes, yes. Hello? There you are, Dorothy. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah, I have to step outside the office. Hold on a second. No worries. Okay, no problem. I'm calling from Illinois, the Western Suburbs. And I um, always get something out of every word of his conversation. It gives me some type of peace. It gives me uh, a pause. And it gives me where I can not just listen, but you know, when I have my, my uh, moments of free time, I can sit down and just, you know, in my meditation, go with some of the things that helped me in my life. And uh, I've been aware of Jesus, uh, the source, for a very long time. And uh, I just appreciate uh, Greg being there. Uh, it's been over 30 years or more that I've been involved in every type of sermon or whatever he's offered to people. And uh and I've come all the way, and I'm still in there, hanging in there. But it gives me a peace and a joy to know that he's given people some type of involvement to not just learn, but to acknowledge the, the Jesus God source within themselves. Because we are. We're made in his image, and we are human, but we still have a spiritual being within us that without that, we have nothing. And all this is for purpose, you know, because it's more than just what we see. So I want to thank everybody for always being involved. Thank you very much, Dorothy. The question we are asking you tonight are, is why are you here? And up next, we have Faye Short. Faye, I am unmuting you to speak. We'd love to hear from you. Are you there, Faye? Hello. Good evening. You got a little reverb going. Do you happen to have two devices there with you? Are you Hello. There? there you are. We're hearing a little bit of echo. If you can tell us, why do you feel? Is this better? It is a little bit. Oh boy. Maybe you want to keep your phone? Can it push the door? Any better? There you are. There you are. So why are Sorry you about that. <laughs> okay. I am excited to be a part of the conversation because for a long time, there were quite a few dots that um, we wanted to connect. And since we um, were in the church community, that did not give us the opportunity to be inquisitive 
and we never had the opportunity to be led in the direction where we might be able to get the answers or some of the answers. So on behalf, I guess, of myself and Kenneth, I say we are excited and I appreciate being a part of the class. Thank you so much, Kenneth. Kenneth, you are up next. I am unmuting you and you are now open to speak. Welcome, Kina Lambert. Thank you. Good evening, everybody. I, um, the reason I'm here is to expand my, my knowledge about the comedic religion. That's, that's my purpose of attending the class. I appreciate your response. Up next is Kenneth. Kenneth Short, welcome. I am unmuting you and you are allowed now to speak to the audience. Please tell us, why are you here? Hello, are you getting me? We are, good evening, we hear you fine. Good evening. We'd like to know, Kenneth, why are you here? Can you answer that for us? Yes, um, as, as Faye mentioned earlier, um, we have had um, a lot of teaching in, in the traditional religion, um, Christian religion, but um, there's some questions that, that are not answered uh, through, the, through the, those teachings. And it leaves you with to wonder um, what maybe it, it, it's it's being hidden from you or whatever it is. And this is an opportunity to get some of that information that you had a burning desire to have and to know more about how oh, to be came about. Thank you so much. Up next is Marcella. Can you please tell us why are you here? I am unmuting your mic. Hello everyone. I'm Marcella from Philadelphia. Um, I've always left the church uh, two years ago. Uh, my spirit, I just had the desire to know uh, how did my ancestors uh, worship? And um, it's just been a burning desire for a while because it is gonna allow me to get a little closer to connect to them. And that's why I'm here. Thank you so much. We appreciate that. Up next is Pamela. I am unmuting you, Miss Pamela. Thank you for joining us. Can you let us know why are you here? Or what about the course caught your attention? Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Pam. I'm from St. Louis, Missouri. Um, I um, always have been interested in different teachings of, um, of, of, of uh, spirituality. And so I was drawn here because I also, also really been uh, interested in, his in African-American history. So this kind of pulls both of them together. And then um, Greg always talks a lot about the universe and I have a thing about that. I'm just here just trying to learn as much as I can. We appreciate you being here, Pamela. Up next is Renee. Renee, if you can ask us, why are you here or what about this course caught your attention? I am unmuting you and you are now allowed to speak to the audience. Hi everybody, I'm Renee Johnson. I am in Lawrenceville, Georgia, right outside of Atlanta. And Ooh. coming from a non a traditional church background, I've been going through this journey now uh, for about on four years and I have to say it was I did have cognitive cognitive dissonance really really bad and um 
when I started uh, uh, listening to Pastor, Pastor uh, G, it actually helped me a great deal with knowledge and, and, and connecting the dots and coming out of a traditional background. So I've been waiting um, to learn more about um, the comedic spirituality. And um, one thing that sits out to me is that uh, trust is a big issue for me because you can't just, you, you hear a lot of things and a lot of things are diff taught in different ways and stuff. But I have um, a lot of trust um, in Pastor G. So I know when he's telling you something, he studied it and I can actually go and study it for myself as well and still come up with the same answers. So I'm here for more knowledge. We appreciate that, Renee. Cheryl, you are up next. Can you please tell us, Cheryl Rogers, and thanks for joining us. Why are you here or what is it about this course that caught your attention? I am unmuting you. Go for Good it. Good evening, everyone. I'm Cheryl Rogers from St. Louis, Missouri. And I've always wanted to know about my ancestors. I'm here to learn as much as I can because it's like, yeah, it's finally somebody to speak about it that is knowledgeable and that's not afraid. So that's why I'm here. Cheryl, can you share, uh, not to put you out there, but um, what was going on in St. Louis in 1969 that you, that do you know somebody that was doing something significant? Oh, in this oh, wow. Yes, my father. My father is James Smith. And in 19, actually 68, 69, he, he opened up uh, African Artifacts Bookstore. It was called the Blacksmith Shop, located in North St. Louis on Fair and Lee which in, in his uh, establishment, he featured uh, re books and, and art African artifacts. He was trading with countries in Africa. And so in 1968, when black was beautiful, we had t-shirts with red, black is beautiful. I started wearing an Afro. My mother created dashikis and the whole, I mean, just the awareness began then. When I was 10 or 11. So it's, it's always been a part of me, and now there's someone to speak about it that has knowledge of my ancestors. And I'm so excited to learn. We're experiencing some sound on your end, but thank you so much, Cheryl, for that. Okay. Up next, we have Candace. Thank you for joining us, Candace. I'm going to unmute you. Can you please tell us why are you here? Tia, I'm going to mute your end. It looks like that reverb is coming. Can you, hear me? Can you mute, Tia? Can you hear me? We can hear you. We just got some reverb in your background there. That's a bit better. Are you there? I'm here. Um, my, uh, my... Thea Atkins, I am trying to mute you. There, there we go. Um, You're muted now. Is that better? There you go, Candace. I'm sorry. Oh, we had some yeah. reverb on another okay. guest. Um, go ahead. Family bloodline. Um, um, spiritual. Um, Anyway, um, I'm a seer prophet and very careful and cautious seer prophet in that. And when I finished university, when I learned there was 353 different religions here in the United States or more, or, or beliefs and practice, my curiosity gets spun off the ground here. So I was looking at the title, Kinetic, uh, that was sent over here, and I had just uh, crossed paths with a book about two weeks ago coming out of my, uh, my audible that I was inter interested in and it was talking about kinetics. So that's why I'm here just to learn more. I'm on a, uh, you can see I'm a learning legacy right now. To learn as much as I can to identify uh, the different uh, beliefs and religions that are there and the roots that are there. Um, 
little bit of trouble hearing you, Candace, but we appreciate it. Tia, you are up next. You are unmuted and you are ready to talk. All righty then. I'm Tia Atkins. I'm here in St. Louis, Missouri. And the reason that I was intrigued by this course is the idea that I'm personally on a journey of expansion this year. And one of the things that I have been working with myself on is the idea, if it is all good because it is all God, then I need to be more open to things that I don't understand like numerology or astrology or astronomy. I am a Leo and I'm often told, oh yes, you're a typical Leo. Well, I don't really know what a typical Leo is. I know what a Tia Sue is and that's what I am. And if other people act like me, good for them. But the truth of the matter is I know, or at least I have a really good suspicion of all the things that I don't know, and I'm open to trying to expand myself and open to more things. And I think this course is going to help me with that. We appreciate that, Tia. Trinity said in the text box, that she's not able to connect because of textual situations, but she is here because she's a natural born teacher student. She lives for clarity and understanding for her true purpose. And her time now is to move forward in her spiritual evolution because she's ready to do that. And then last but not least, we have Kenneth Short. I will unmute you and please tell us why are you here or what piqued your interest in this course? I think Ken came through already. Um, Ken is the husband of Faith. And I think. Got it. Okay, got it. There may be a phone also. Understood. Okay, well, that handles everyone on the list. Awesome. So, um, as our facilitator in the back room, um, was there something of interest that um, piqued your interest, V? Absolutely. So you all probably since nine or 10 years old, when I was going to church with family, I knew that it was a little bit deeper, even than my childhood pastor had taught me and even deeper than what I learned in school. I was absolutely certain um, that I was different and chosen to learn this type of teaching as I'm getting older and, and I'm a mother and I'm raising my children, I'm becoming more spiritually aware of who I am as a black woman and, and connecting my history to my ancestors and my spiritual awareness has been incredibly important to me. So I'm incredibly attracted, number one, to the teachings so that I can learn who I am versus who I thought and who I told, who I was told I was. And then number two, so I can pass that teaching on to my children. It's really important to me. So that's why I'm here. And to handle your technical difficulties. Awesome. Great. And you're doing a, a great job. You're very complimentary to what I'm looking to do. Um, gives me the opportunity to be present to what I'm here to do. So I want to take a few minutes and um, share with you all. If you could um, go ahead and mute everyone back out because I'm still hearing some background and you guys, if you want to, you can mute yourselves too um, once you talk. So once we get hang of this. Okay. So um, I wanted to take a minute right now and talk about my journey, um, how I arrived where I'm at. I didn't just show up right here, right now. Um, it took uh, uh, 30 years. Actually, I would say I'm 61. So I, it's been a 40 year journey to get here. Um, it started when I was around 12 or so, 10 or 12, and many of you have heard the story that I was on my way home because of, it was the summertime and it was a streetlight situation, had to be on the porch by the streetlight, and I always tried to be there because I didn't want to be in the house the next day because um, I like my freedom. So 
um, on my way home, there was a, on the corner of 11th or 12th and Madison, there was the church called the Miracle Revival Center. They had a tent meeting every sun, summer. And so they was having a tent meeting and they were a holiness church. And I had only been introduced to the, the Baptist um, um, way of life. And so it caught me um, in a very interesting way when I saw what I saw. I saw um, like people being healed. I saw some real interesting things that didn't go on in my church. So on my way home, I, mean, I stated to, to source or to myself, speaking to God, I said, if you're real, if, if you're real in my lifetime, show me. And so over the course of the last four years, God has shown me. He has shown me in many different ways from being able to um, see the scripture as I knew them come to life, lay his hand on the sick, saw them recover, um, spoke the word, created things, but I saw a lot of hit and miss stuff. But then the other thing that got me was that we were taught in the church that I grew up in when, when it, as it pertains to my journey to become a pastor, to walk in, into the fullness of it. It was a word church, um, a non-denominational word church. And so a word church is a church that studies the Greek and the Hebrew. Um, and that always bothered me because what it says is that God was either Greek or Hebrew, or God had a heavy Hebrew influence and he was played around with Greek. And so I'm always asked, why do we just take it back to the Greek or to the Hebrew? The Greek society did not exist knowledge wise until they came into contact with the, the, um, the Kemetic community and they came to Alexandria, they came to the, 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 the teaching temples and was engaged with the priest and they took that information back to Greece. And that information, if you should literally study the history of Aristotle, um, Plato, and those guys, they were under great scrutiny because they were bringing strange teachings back and they could use those teachings to transform their community. So now we study the, the Greek, we study the, 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 all of the Greek plays and the Greek characters as if they originated with them. Um, so I read a book, one of the first books that I read was Stolen Legacy by George G. James. It is a book that I require for anyone who is um, following me and seeking to be licensed or acknowledged as a minister of the gospel. I recommend every teacher, not only secular teacher, but every spiritual teacher needs to read Stolen Legacy. It talks about the Greek philosophy is stolen and it's Egyptian philosophy. Why do I say that? Because the Greek philosophy heavily, heavily influences the Christian religion. Um, so if you go to the New Testament, it's written in Greek. The Old Testament was written in Hebrew. So you got two people groups that is presenting to us the distinctions of who God is, how he shows up, but he's doing it from their, um, from their culture, from their, the essence of who they are. So if they have the liberty to present Christ or God, even Christ, which comes from the comedic word caressed, caressed, and the Greeks took it and made it Christ. And so we take on the, the verbiage that they use. Why can't we? Africans, um, those who are, are influenced, uh, we have West Africa. So I don't know, I wanna say this. I present from the comedic perspective because that's where I've been led to. That's where I levitated to. But you can find some of the same teachings in the West, like along the Ivory Coast. Um, they have their own spiritual systems, but that spiritual system traces back to the Nile Valley civilization. It is believed that all civilization started there and expanded throughout the entire world. So, um, in so to make my story real short, so in 1981, I got called into ministry. Um, I began to study the scripture. I was heavily involved in the word churches, 
And then in 1987, I completed my master's degree in psychology, and that was the catalyst to get me on a new path because I began to study black psychology because in all my academic studies, there was never a course on black psychology. But once I complete the, the degree, then I find out there's a, such a thing as black psychology. And I began to read all the materials and it led me to Egypt. You say, how did, how did psychology lead you to Egypt? Because the word psychology um, comes from the, uh, the um, comedic word, saku the study of the soul, but psychology as we know it, don't study the soul, neither does it study the, the, the mind. Um, it studies the personality, it studies the, the brain and behavior, but it don't study the spiritual essence. And so um, as I began to delve into that, I began to come across all of these books. Now, the plot thickens in 19, um, one of my first matches, messages I preached was, um, can these bones live out of the book of Ezekiel? And that message got me uh, virtually set down in the church because I was told that the church is not a place to teach black history. And so I chose to leave that church respectfully because I didn't want to be inside of a container that I could not pour myself out. And so I left and I went to Jeremiah Wright. Some of you may know who Jeremiah Wright is. Uh, he's a theologian par excellence. And he had the, matter of fact, he used to be Barack Obama's pastor, for those who don't know. One of the largest churches on the south side of Chicago. Um, his church was filled predominantly, or at that time, with um, the Black professional. So I sat there for about six months, um, and it affirmed for me that I was on the right path. And then a little bit later after that, I had the opportunity or was to told to start a church in this called Exodus Ministries. And that was interesting that I chose Exodus Ministries because it had to do with Moses. Now, for those of you who don't know, uh, Moses is one, the biblical character is one of my favorite characters because I've come to know, I didn't know it then, but I know it now, that Moses was actually a comedic priest. Now, the scripture tells us he was learned in all the ways of the Egyptians, but they veil how significant that was. Moses is the very same individual who led the children of Israel supposedly out of bondage, and he was the one that gave them the term, the Lord thy God is one. So over the course of time, I've come to find out that Moses was, was an Egyptian priest, and I said, who is this priest? And come to find out that he is Akhenaten. And so when I found out he was Akhenaten, I began to study about Akhenaten, and I was studying about Akhenaten from a Eurocentric perspective, that is the Egyptologist who did not understand it would say that he was a heretic king. He was a heretic a religious zealot, zealot, zealot that wanted to um, change the religious system. Well, part of that is true. He had a call. He, he, because of what was going on in the, the priesthood at that time, the priest of Amun, they were um, exploiting the people, such as the priest today, fleecing people. It's all about performance. Just sit back sometime and, and look at what you see, and you see it's all about money. And the priesthood, the priests of Amun, were doing the same thing. So, uh, matter of fact, his 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 uh, his name was um, before he changed it to Akhenaten. It was um, Tut, I think Tut Moses the third and fourth or one of them, but we're going to get to that. And I'm saying this to say that I began to go down a, 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 a trail. The breadcrumbs began to lead me deeper and deeper into Egypt. And I got to a point where in the 90s, I had the opportunity to meet your Ivan Van Sertimers, I to meet your Dr. Ben Yakamans. I met Dr. Henry Clark. And as we go through this course, you're gonna be introduced to some of their writings. And I didn't just meet them like I was in a room with thousands of people. I was up and close and personal. I got the opportunity to engage them, ask questions, but I didn't know who they were. I didn't know the significance of who they were. And many of them have transitioned on. And the sad thing about it, they transitioned broke. Because what happens is 
the stuff that they are teaching were teaching had no value. When they did put out a tape, everybody would copy the tape and instead of him making $5 off of each tape, he made $5 and then the tape was duplicated time and time again because the people who were getting the information didn't understand about the gratitude and about the law of circulation and appreciation of someone's gifts. And I said that to say this, that many people who would choose, many ministers who know this information, and I know they know it because many of them, particularly during Black History Month, have called me and asked me to exegete a particular scripture so that they can talk about it or to talk about a particular uh, comedic figure so they can uh, bring that into their message. So they know, but you may say, well, if they know, why don't they just jump out and teach it? Because this is their livelihood. This is where their bread is buttered. And so I know firsthand when you begin to go against what people are accustomed to, people will go against you. And so many of them choose um, just that's why we're in the predicament that we're in today. That's when we look at our politicians. They choose to do what pads their pocket, what put food on their table and say instead of trusting that God will take care of them, source will take care of them, they continue to perpetuate what I will just outright call lies. And I'm, I'm going to share that with you. What is a story? A story is a lie. They continue to perpetuate stories that have been uh, angled in a direction that oppresses Africans that were in America in particular. So I don't teach this to because I'm an angry Black man. I don't teach this because I just want to have all this information. I'm not even teaching this to you that you may need to learn all of the comedic names and take on Wayne Daishikis. No, no, no. There's a deeper meaning behind it because none of these people are real. They are all uh, stories. They're all um, deities, not necessarily deities, but they are principles that if you understand the principle of that person, why they wore the hawk head or, or why they had a, had a head of the jackal. If you understand the principle behind them, here, a picture is worth a thousand words. So if you could see a picture and can interpret that picture just by seeing the picture without having all these words, you're more powerful than the person who try to grope for words to explain a principle or a, a law. But when you see the picture, the, the commissions understood that, that images, they will say a thousand things with one image. And so I am on this journey because I'm on the journey of self-discovery. I'm on the journey that um, takes me through transformation. And when we look at the tree of life, we're going to talk about the tree of life is about transformation. When we look at the uh, what we call the um, Egyptian or comedic book of the dead, but it's not called that. It's the book of coming forth by day, coming forth by day. That means you, it's, you go into the netherworld. It's really talking about going to sleep at night because every night you go to sleep. And every night, if you were to consider yourself going through um, the judgments or you will be bouncing up against the 42 declarations of my aunt, and you will say, I have not stolen. OK, and if you're laying there and you say, I have not stolen and you get to check in your spirit and say, oh, you did steal today, then you will process it with yourself. You will make amends for that. And now you're transforming. And so when we look at what's called the 42 negative confessions, or we're going to attach it to our Ten Commandments. The Ten Commandments come from the 42, what they call negative confessions, which is actually the 42 laws of Ma'at. Then the Ten Commandments was reduced down to one. Jesus told us, love thy neighbor as thyself, you know, love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, all thy soul, love thy neighbor as yourself. There's no greater command than that. So they are reduced down to one. So Ma'at is the same as the commandment of love. You can't love without peace, without justice, righteousness, all those things. So in this conversation for the next four weeks, you're going to be introduced to concepts and principles that you're going to be able to apply alongside of your Christian belief system. And you're going to leave with a deeper understanding. So am I expecting you to leave now um, being where I am? No. Some of you may be where I am, and some of you may be on a fast track far beyond me. If I'm that bridge, 
If I'm that cannon that shoots you out there, that's wonderful. So I want you to know that I am not on this journey to convert people. I am on this journey as a bridge. For those who are dealing with cognitive dissonance, you've known for many years that Jesus wasn't white. You've known for many years that Jesus never existed. But you didn't know who to say that to. You didn't want to say it to yourself because that means everything you've been taught is a lie. No, but the power is in the belief. The word of God tells us, be it according to your belief. But don't believe in the personality, but believe in the principles that are presented through that personality. So it doesn't really um, give me any peace to know that Jesus was black if I don't understand what made him great. It was not his physicality. It was his mentality. It was his spirituality. And so that's what the comedic science is about, is being one with nature, being one with everything, and being one with yourself, and being one with the creator, which you are a part of. So tonight, I wanted to use this time to kind of give you a sense of what will be discovered. And you may say, well, I didn't cover some of the things that we thought we were going to get the first. No, you're going to get them. I'm going to send you some links that you can listen to because what I have to offer you can't be covered in four hours. Matter of fact, it can't be covered in uh, a four, four hour, 40 hour week, can't be covered in 160 hours. What I'm sharing with you is going to take you on a journey that will take you the rest of your life. And for those who said that they want to be able to share this with their children, it's right on time. Because what was given to us by our grandparents is not relevant today because they will not be able to contend that faith because there's so much information that is available to those who want to refute it. And so if you are not able to integrate the truths that will transform you, you're gonna end up having another level of cognitive dissonance and you'll find yourself without any level of faith. So I hope that those who have chose to embark upon this journey know that you're here by design. And I want you to know that although um, I put that price point out there for those to register. Now, those of you who are, have not engaged me in the past and have um, joined up and you paid the $49, I appreciate it. And I believe that the value you get over the next four weeks will far exceed that. Matter of fact, if at the end of this 49, I mean, this, this four week period, you feel as though you didn't get anything out of it, I will freely return that um, gift back to you because that's how serious I am about this. I'm not doing this for gain. For those of you who joined in and you joined, came in on um, the gifted or, or the, the promo code, um, if while you're going through this teaching, you want to be a blessing to this ministry, there is a way that you can do it. You know, so I came up with the price points of $49 was almost like $10 a week. So if you are interested in supporting this work, um, there's ways to do that. You can do it by going to the website and there it is on your, on your screen, theplaceofpossibilities.com, or you can hit text to give on your phone. You know, you can text give to the number 417-815-8227. And so if you desire to be a blessing to the ministry, you can do so in that manner. But know this, I don't do this for gain. But this is what I have learned, that when someone sees that there is value, they respond as though it's value. And if you do that, then the word that you receive, the teachings you receive, will unfold in a greater way. Now, thank you. Giving is a sacred act of your acknowledgement of another's value in your life. And so I see that as I bought a level of value. So we're going to wrap up tonight. This is um, session one. You're going to get some things this week, and then you can join me on Monday, and you'll get that in the email, too. You can join me on Monday. Um, we're going to have a conversation about uh, what, you sh what you've covered this week, and I'm going to ask that when you have a question, write it down. Send it to me in an email so I can formulate that question, and if it's something I don't know, it'll give me time to do the research, 
So when we have our session on Monday, I'll be able to say, okay, here's some of the questions I got this week and here's, here's the answers. And that way you will have that. I didn't have that. I didn't have anybody to give me the answers. Most of the people that I engaged, they were trying to turn me. What do you mean turn you? They were trying to get me to drop my flag, to get me to discount what I had experienced. But I couldn't because what I had experienced was real. I saw an eight-year-old boy that had asthma going from being an asthmatic to being, being able to not only play sports, but join the military, which at that time would not let you in with it. So I saw the healing power of God in my life and other people's life. I saw how um, my life has just been um, unfolded in the very images that I have. The, the things I desire to have, they've all come to pass. So Christianity for me is the breadcrumb that leads me back to the true essence of comedic Christianity. And we're gonna talk about how you, how you can spell that in a different way and how um, you can continue to be a Christian and not be apologetic about it, but know that you have a true understanding of what it means to be Christ-like or Christ-conscious. Well, I respect your time. And what I'm going to do at this time is I'm going to uh, keep the back room open. And if you want to drop out and you, you want to um, stick around for a couple minutes and have some questions, I'll field some questions. So awesome, great. Thank you all. all right. Mike Marcello yeah. wants to know if you can show the cover of that book and re-mention the title of the book. Okay, I don't know if you'll be able to see it because of my green screen, but the title of the book is Stolen Legacy. Greek philosophy is stolen Egyptian philosophy. George G. James. Now, I want to, I have a personal relationship with a bookstore in Chicago. Um, I've been with them for 40, almost 40 years. Um, Afriware is the name of the bookstore. I'll send you the link. So if you want to order some books, you can order them and you can make mention that um, Pastor Greg um, referred you. I'll let her know and I'm see if I can work out a discount um, if you are purchasing the books. If you have a, um, a, a, a black bookstore in your neighborhood that you have relationship with, go ahead and order it through them. However, if you don't have it, don't go to Amazon. It's okay to go to Amazon, but I would go to a, a black bookstore to keep them in business. It's so difficult for black bookstores to stay in business. So this is one book I'm going to give you always, every week, probably give you another recommended book. Um, I have literally thousands of books that I need to get my library out of storage um, because now it's time for me to teach this stuff and I just pack my books away. Um, not that I need to know it, but I want to be able to give you a source document when I give you some information. Awesome. Is there any questions out there, V, for me? One last thing from Tia Atkins. She's asking you regarding that book. Can you say the author's name again, please? George G. M. James. And you're going to get it. You're going to get his um, the, the reference material with that in it. Um, this book is a great book. Um, it talks about, again, the Greek philosophy and is being stolen. Um, and you can always use this as a credible source document when you're talking to those who say that nothing good came out of Africa. Well, all the goods left Africa. If you go to Rome and you look in the Vatican, you'll find in the basement all the goods, like the, the black uh, Madonna and child, which is a set or a saw, I mean, a, a set really holding a saw or a set holding uh, Haru. Haru is the son. Before you become a man, you have to be, you have to be a son. You have to be a child. You know, in order to get the deeper things of, of, of God, you must first come as a child. You must become a Haru. And then as becoming a Haru is neither male or female, um, but it has both divine aspects. And then you grow into the um, I am a saw. I am the manifested, transformed, transformed son or daughter to the man or the asset of God. All right, awesome. Okay, um, V. Well, that's all I've have. You can close us out with a little smooth jazz, and I will make sure that this recording gets to everyone. 
and we will look forward to next week. Thank you all for joining us. Great teaching, Greg. One last